Hi, I'm Chris with Death Watch Productions, and today we're going to be playing The Prophecies of Dusk and Dawn, a little game that I've been working on, unfortunately, only for a week. So we'll see if uh, this is season one or just a prolonged one shot. And joining me today are the usual suspects. Let's start on my left here. I am Brandon, and I will be playing Landon Velox, a young lord of the what, Duke? Yeah. Dukes. <laughs> Of the Custos Fluminus. <laughs> That's my character. I know less about him than you do, so we'll see. Yeah, I, I made his character for him. So, <laughs> Hello, my name is Travis, and I'm playing Hadrius Alenius Ordius. I am the son of a poor merchant, but I aim to change my fortunes. You may find my methods unethical, <laughs> but I assure you all my dealings are legal. If they are not, then I merely failed to obtain the proper licenses. Is that something I can pay directly to you, and we can settle this in a speedy manner? <laughs> the end. And I'm John Plain Jardine. There's no last name, because I'm not a real person. <laughs> Instead, I am property of uh, either the state or the royal family. But mm -hmm. soon, I hope my fortunes will change. All right. I will, as many of you have probably already heard, I will issue a uh, content warning, not for the content of this game, but for the Google Latin that is heavily <laughs> strewn through and about this uh, session and uh, the world in general. So apologies. All right. So real quick, we'll just give a brief opening here. Natal Solis, the birthplace of the sun. That's the island that you guys are going to be starting on. So named for in the days when the demons of the abyss surge forth, ravaging the body of Terra, which is the world that you're on, and the corpse of Sol, the true sun, S-U-N in this case, hung low in the sky, providing no light nor warmth to drive the demons back. Solar was born, righteous, infinite, and terribly incandescent. He fell onto the ravaged body of Terra in a blinding streak of light. He fell from the heavens, and with him he brought salvation, salvation to the weary flesh and salvation to the seeking soul. However, that was long ago, and the throne that was made for him has been left empty for a thousand years or more. No king to rule, for there can only ever be one, the god-king, blessed Solar. And that is an excerpt from the Libris Solis, the Book of the Sun. And that is kind of the founding religion of these lands. Solar was a god made flesh born from luna the moon who drove the demons back this is all ancient like n none of you have seen a demon you may believe in magic but you have never actually seen a spell spark or or a, a demon whisper to you there are some that claim there are being lunatic is a thing that occurs in these lands but it's usually not demonic possession it's someone who worships luna in these lands, the main church is of Solar, uh, and while they are fairly lenient, they are the main power. Next to them was the steward of the land, a young boy who took the position because his father had died when he was 14, the current steward, named uh, Edric. Recently, the second of Spring's End, he rose or he coronated himself, he became king, he made himself king. And that threw much of these lands into chaos, because there cannot be another king. Only Solar is king. Uh, the pontiff, Pontiff uh, Linus, uh, decried him, called him a heretic and a blasphemer, mm -hmm. and excommunicated him from the church, which did not go well. <laughs> And so that is a brief overview of the most recent events. And so now we kind of take a slight step back in time to the sixth of Winter's End when young Hadrius receives a letter slipped under his door. There we go. Dwing. Oh, sorry. Uh, new yeah, Winter no. is what I meant. Yeah. Oh, okay. Did you get the pop-up? Yeah, to Hadrius. Yeah. Oh. Adrius, news has reached my ears that you are the man to go for the transportation of all manner of cargo. 
That is why my lord wishes me to speak with you on just a sm such a matter. If it pleases you, meet with me at the soft-spoken lady on the second of midwinter. There we go. Hmm. Tap it in my hands. So you're currently located in the merchant city of Maris Oris. It's a, a sprawling port city in which the constantly filled with ships coming and going, uh, transporting cargo from Natal Natale Solis, the island where you are, to Prope Orientum, the nearby continent to the east. It's a land of wealth. There are little in the way of merchants or royalty here. It's all about commerce. Right. And it's not uncommon to see these propped up merchants that think themselves to be lordlings dueling in the streets or or spending large amounts of money trying to essentially buy what they can't have, which is a title. So it's a good place for a, a budding merchant such as yourself to be. And the soft-spoken lady is a notorious tavern on the edge of the the rich side of town, essentially. It borders it, and many of the lordlings go there because it it sparks that sense of danger to them being outside of their their territory, essentially, without actually venturing too deep into the the wharfs or the the slums of Marasaurus. Do I know it well? Do I frequent it? Yeah, it's a good okay. place. Uh, getting to know the upper cl upper crust is never a bad thing. That's where the rich go slumming. Mm -hmm. It's like Touristville. It's where they buy their mercury potions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I will aim to keep that appointment then. All right. Yeah. What, uh, sorry, where did it go? So the second of mid, what is the relationship of midwinter to new winter as um, far as the time scale goes? They're sections of a season. So okay. there are four seasons with three to or three months essentially to a season. So new winter is the first month of winter, gotcha. mid end. I think the I don't know. I'm really bad at math, but I think that adds up about right. So this okay. <laughs> yes, I will aim to be at that appointment. Darn attend it. to my other affairs in the meantime. All right, you want to roll a like a bargain or an appraise? Sure. We'll see if we can get you going on some. Yeah, let's try bargain this time. Just looking for a good deal. Aren't we all? Got a success. Nice. You are either able to offload some product or take more on more. If you want to take on more, then we'll roll another bargain to see how much of your income we'll transfer into cargo. Yeah, I'm looking to to take on some more. All right. So, yeah. Yeah. Roll again. Uh, you can roll fast talk or bargain, depending on what you want to do. We'll do bargain. Okay. Apparently, I am an ethical dealer after all. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, you take on two more units of cargo that are average. Okay. And minus one from your income, I believe is what I listed as down near the bottom of your... Oh, I didn't do it for Jardine. We'll have to rectify that soon. Sorry, you said two more units? Yeah. And then minus one from my income? Dang it. It doesn't uh, list it. You should have had cash on hand and... Maybe I only did it for Brandon. Maybe right. I wanted to do that before we started. I'll make a note on my Yeah, we'll do it at the end of the game. Minus one from income. And when I say end of the game, I mean the end of the season. So that, uh, so you buy your cargo. Uh, it's from a fellow that you know, so he's kind of... Yeah, that's supposed to say it's salt this time. All right. If that fits in the average. Oh, it does. I think for the most part, like with like trade goods... I think you could probably name anything. It would be the amounts of it. So you have oh, okay. an average amount of salt is what I'll say. Just a pocket full. <laughs> Only if you're eating <laughs> like at Brandon's house <laughs> is a pocket full of average amount. Yeah. What do, where do I uh, do most of the purchasing at? Just on this is a dockside yeah, you're, sort of thing. You're probably well known enough in your average merchant circle. That you were probably you probably have a buyer. You're probably buying off a ship. Yeah, so I was just going back and forth with the fella, trying to get <laughs> what he was going to release to me for cheap, and all he'd give up is some salt. But <laughs> gotta fill the wagon. Yeah, more than more than an honorable trade, I'd say. Salts so any season will fetch you good in areas right. where they, there's no port. So, all right. So your dealing's done. It's getting on towards uh, 
say mid afternoon. Well, I guess if I'm done trading, what would I probably do? I think I would do a bit of reading if that's possible. I'm trying to. Oh, do I? Am I checking? When, when do we check in in this system? For oh yeah, any success. Uh, the only thing I'm thinking about changing is uh, making it like unlimited the number it can go up, but lowering how much you can get in a go. I was thinking about changing it to either one d four or just plus one. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I might. Well, maybe I'll settle in for some games, mm. games of chance. Okay. You uh, you you know a good number of places, various taverns and inns throughout Mars Oris where they facilitate to either private or public gaming. They have. I'm just going to use real world games for this at, at right now at the very least. But you know, various stuff like chess and uh, dice. Yeah, type games, games of strategy and chance. Yeah, I'll, ch I'll go in for the the strategy ones. So a chess like game. Go. <laughs> Get go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a strategy game. Strategio. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on. Uh yeah. So I'm go because I, I I would fancy although it may not be true I would fancy that business acumen and being good at games of strategy have some overlap so this is all in the service of hmm. uh, the almighty greed yes yes you put things very bluntly whoever you are <laughs> shouting me from Just across the continent tic -tac -toe <laughs> on your conscience tic tac toe <laughs> what's that game where you have the, all the pictures and you got to ask the other person does your person have glasses oh, yeah. clue or, no uh guess who i think guess is who yeah. yeah that'd be that'd be a good one it probably has the the most uh, useful business skills ever of any game. Mm -hmm. Guess you, who? Yeah, you'd be sure to show your your uh, business mind and savviness playing that game. But I'll aim for a lower opponent, like a an opponent with less money. <laughs> okay, seems more appropriate to take from the boar. <laughs> <laughs> but. Basically playing for smaller fractions of coins or, or whatever, you know, smaller games. Bit, what's the word? Miserly? <laughs> when you do your, like, trading and stuff, is that a skill? Well, where you got skills, I don't have a skill that is merely trade, but, you know, like I have bargain and appraise. Okay, all right, yeah. Persuade. And etiquette, okay. Yeah, etiquette. All right, give me a roll, Travis. Gaming roll? Yeah, uh -huh. Go easy on me, gentlemen. I'm just starting out. Sirs. Failure. We'll see how he does. Uh, gaming. So he is a bigger failure than you. <laughs> uh, he just... You think he actually doesn't know how the game is? And I'm not certain I know how the game is. No, I, I think you know. I think you know. I think you're... I think you might be... I don't know. Maybe it's... Uh, Nah, yeah, you you showed poorly, but you know that he doesn't know that it was right. like poor for you. He thinks it was just two two people that just don't quite know the game, and he doesn't he doesn't grasp it the fundamentals. Yeah, so I'll convince him over the course of the game that you should consider brushing up on those fundamentals, and I, you know I could show you a few techniques as I'm failing to win, but he doesn't know it, you know, of, of how to be better at it. <laughs> Yeah, he. Yes, I, I look forward to it. <laughs> uh, as you can see, and he'll uh, point to the. I. I. Was it playing for money? Probably. Yeah. Yeah, and he'll point to his ever shrinking pile. But at the end, I don't know how it happens. Maybe the house is somehow able to take a cut. <laughs> the house walks away with more. <laughs> uh, no, friend. I think you are just losing <laughs> your shirt, as they say. Yeah. Here, let me show you this this opening series of moves. This is your basic, we'll call it a Castellan. I don't know. <laughs> mm, I like it. Go for it. Yeah. Is this, what am I doing though? What do you, what does this sound like to you? Oh, uh, hmm. are you trying to get them to go again? Sure. Are maybe, you, are maybe you persuading steering? them into some more games? Are, I think this is a guy I could win against. Are you steering them poorly? Or are you being honest in your, mm. your tactical, mm. uh, instructions? Well, I think I'll be honest with, a standard opening set, and it will give me advantage in the sense that I will then know what his 
series of moves will be after I train a minute. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So. Um, persuade, okay. fast talk, uh, strategy, if you wanted to. There's strategy? No, 1% on that. So we'll go with persuade. All Success. right. So you'll get a plus 20 on your next gaming roll against him. Can we just type that in the modifier? Yeah. Okay. And then roll it. We'll see how you do. Success. <laughs> if this skill is mod, he got a special. So you you did the Castellan too well, sir. You you pull out this this amazing ploy right. to convince him to do the Castellan, and he's going right along with it. Oh yes, oh yes, oh amazing! I see it now, my lord. And then you see a glint in his eyes. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> and you realize that you have fallen for the Castellan main foil mm. and it's all it's gone the pot is won <laughs> well i'll stand up and offer my hand well played sir well played <laughs> anytime young man <laughs> and he'll shake your your hand and then i'll go to bed in a distemper a foul mood well before you go to bed you uh, do have <laughs> if you wish a date at the soft-spoken lady Oh, is it today? Yes. Oh, okay. Seems That's like uh, you fell victim to one of the classic blunders. <laughs> right. Never a classic blunder. <laughs> <laughs> was it? Never, uh, yeah. never was it engaged in a war in Eurasia? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> land war. Yeah, Eurasia. okay. Well, I'll walk over to this place. You know, I'm a tall fellow, stooped. I'm often walking with my hands behind my back, and I'm currently ruminating about being played. This bodes ill for whatever for future deal is ahead of me, but I'll try to wipe away the distemper by the time I get there. All right. Maybe I'll push over a, an old person. Over there. <laughs> Jeez. Not illegal. <laughs> not if they're poorer than you. And, yeah, as I say, if they don't have that much money, it's definitely not illegal. All right, so you go through the twists and turns, and the city is getting noticeably better from the location you previously right. were. Uh, it's one of those where it's the, the mystery of life. You could never understand how anyone would consider this to be the dangerous side of town, as long as you are polite. Right. As long as you are polite, no one will try to stick a sword through you here. But the slightest of slights will almost always initiate a duel. And eventually, you pass a well-to-do uh, shoe and uh, shoe shop, and next to it is the soft-spoken lady. Rather discreet building, which is good for the owner. You kind of, or you outside of it, you do see, maybe discreet was the bad word, but uh, plain, perhaps, compared to the other buildings around it. The only way you, you would know this is a place of any notoriety, uh, not notoriety, but worthwhileness, is the young men, who are obviously fairly well-to-do, and ladies out there boasting and shouting back and forth, obviously deep into their cups. Hmm. And as you're walking around that that shoe shop, you are just in time to see one clean skewered through, and he falls. His his friends rush to him, uh, cradling him, him in their arms, and uh, then whisk him away somewhere. Right. And the uh, the other man, the man who skewered him, has a look of a man who... He he does this on occasion. It he doesn't seem to be taken aback or or Not his first skewering. Yeah. Well, at this point, I'm just trying to avoid notice because I'm not one for dueling. But uh, I'm also here under the assumption that whoever wrote me a letter will mark me out of a crowd and approach me. So I'll just get a drink and post up somewhere where I'm unlikely to get skewered. Mm -hmm. And uh, just wait for the the deal to go down yeah as the uh the day drags on and the sun begins to set in the west you see this similar thing well you mostly hear it or see it outside the the, the glass of the windows just occurs you know you'll two men will be drinking one minute uh, arms around each other you know their shoulders toasting to to wealth and to prosperity and then something will go awry and the glasses will be thrown outside they'll go and only one will return usually and as the lanterns are lit, are lit, eventually an uh, older man, gentleman, walks in. He looks around the room. Some of the young men there eye him and the sword on his waist. Uh, and then his eyes 
land on you, and he walks straight over to you and sits down. Well, first he asks, not wanting to cause an offense. Is the seat taken? No, by all means. Thank you. I find that drinking alone is never a good thing, and he signals for wine to be brought over. Well, I could toast to that. I am Hadrius. Pleasure to be at your service. It is. And he'll toast you. Um, to opportunities. Opportunities. I work for a merchant in this city. He wishes to remain nameless, uh, a nameless benefactor. And he was wondering if you would take offense to the transportation of some special uh, goods to us, uh, for us. Would that be something that you're against? Not in a basic sense, sir. Of course, uh, details might change my mind unless you are paying for discretion in the matter. My lord pays handsomely for discretion, and he sits something on the table, a small purse. Okay. Well, in that case, I find no offense. Very well. You are to leave as soon as possible for Dominus Solis, the, the holy city. You will wait there for a time, and during the... Where did it go? You will wait there until the second a spring's end. You will be paid for this. Oh, sorry. Uh, not the second uh, spring's end. Where the heck is it? I need to find a program that makes a better timeline. And so just writing it all in. Sorry, Travis. Uh -huh. No, no problem. Maybe it is the uh, second of Spring's End, and I just wrote it wrong. Yeah, okay. I wrote it wrong. Oh, no. Okay, we're good. All right. Yeah, so Spring's End, second of Spring's End. I do not see any particular problem with this arrangement. Of course, we'll have to discuss all of the particulars, but would it be appropriate and speedy enough for you to set out in the morning? You have more than enough time. While there, perhaps you will find a, a mutual friend of ours. I hope he will become a friend to you anyway. Uh, give him this. And he slides uh, a letter w uh, with a wax seal. It's a blank wax seal, so no house okay. uh, or, you know, no identifiers. Give him this and tell him that you are a friend. All right, yeah, I'll, uh, I have some skill with my hands, so I'll, you know, twirl it and make it seemed to disappear somewhere mm. in my shirt, along with that coin pouch that was proffered. Are you fishing for a, a <laughs> sleight of hand? No, no, not at all, not at all. Um, I was just part of his character. No, I'm completely fine with that. It's just that if you <laughs> want to try... <laughs> I'd rather just leave it, because <laughs> this is where my the way I envision my character begins to unravel once I start making skill rolls. Oh, actually, I'm an idiot, and I have all thumbs, so... Yeah, it's just a little, for nothing, just a little bit of his showiness, and yeah, is there anything anything else of importance I should know? No, just get the cargo to us safely. The cargo will know where it needs to go. Okay. Well, I'll try not to uh, bat an eye at that. <laughs> anyway, our business here is concluded. I hope to see you soon. And he gets up, makes a slight. Uh, polite bow to you. Yeah, I'll stand to offer a return bow and a slight raise of my wine glass goblet. Oh, and then he turns on on his heel and walks out into the night. And that's where we'll leave you for a while. Okay. Uh, you were going to set out the next day? Yeah, in the morning, if it can all be arranged. All right. Let's see. Might have to do some jumping around here. So if you plan to travel by land actually you can go in from there the main road in and out of dominus solis is built around the lip or not the lip but uh the walls of a valley right. essentially and it was done so to force an army to kind of march <laughs> around there's no straight way into dominus solis so to get to the lip of the valley it takes about 16 days and then to get to Damas Solis itself, it'll take you a proper month. Okay. So prepare oh. for that. Uh, I think I'll probably fast forward it in this stage of the campaign. Okay. But especially because you don't really have any combat skills. So think about that uh, food. Yeah, I was thinking about uh -huh. the supplies needed and a guard, yeah. basically. So If you want, uh, these 
here are ship routes, the uh, lines on the map. Right. And I, why the hell isn't it? There it is, linger. And it would be, I believe, one one and a half times faster. So, uh, what is that? Like twenty? No, uh, twelve, eleven days to get there. But you would be waiting there a while. It's yeah, several months away. I think I'll go. I'll do the overland route. All right. Uh, give me a luck roll. I I lied when I said we we're done with you immediately. So I apologize. Uh, luck is your okay, power. power. Okay. Just normal. Mm-hmm. Success. All right. Give me a uh, a fast talk, an etiquette brigand or outlaws, if you have that. Or if you just want to try normal etiquette, Mars Oris will also work. Yeah, I didn't see. For mine, I don't have an option for, what do you call it? Like a specialty in it? So I don't even know what oh, mine is. No, I, I make the specialty. So oh, okay. I'd uh, put the, was it the plus sign? And then I would have put etiquette. Right. Colon Mars Oris and then the base. Hmm. So it was uh, fast talk or etiquette or what else? Uh, or all of them. It was fast talk, etiquette, uh, Mars Oris, or just plain etiquette. You know. Okay. And remember, you still have the modifier on. Here's etiquette. Failure. Do you want the fast talk as well? <laughs> yeah, sure. Also failure. <laughs> so they, there are, so the slums outside of Mars Oris are fairly crime free because the merchants don't broker crime near the city they want the city to be fair despite all the dueling but the dueling's not illegal right right so like highway robbery type stuff harassing of merchants near the city has earned the slum part which is outside the main walls of mars Oris, a burning on several occasions <laughs> the merchant lords will send in their guards and just burn every every house that they can find yeah so the brigands and highwaymen have moved out into the woods well away from the city, and that's where they ply their trade. You know a good number of them over your years of traveling this road. Unfortunately, not enough. It, it appears that maybe they have been they, maybe they have died or have been incarcerated, but you do not meet any of them. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And so make a note that they will take 1d6, let's see. They took three units of cargo most likely your salt price of, of doing business yeah and for the most part you know that as long as you give them what they want they'll leave you for the most part unharassed they're, they're not going to kill you for the fun of it down to 12 units of average trade goods <laughs> other than that your time to damas solas passes uneventfully perhaps rather boring Unless you did hire guards, did you want to? You could pass the time talking and gaming with them. Yeah, I'll probably just hire one. I, I mean, <laughs> if I can afford it. Yeah, I. It's going to be based on his skills are going to be based on his wealth bracket that you right. want. So a cheap one would be like they would get plus twenty five to the appropriate skills, and they would cost a cheap price. So basically, a quarter a day for you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, make a note of that, and we'll probably chart. Guard. It, it, it'll be uh, by season, right? So, or not season, um, by month is when you'll pay out. So you'll pay them once. All right, sorry, Brandon. Let's jump over to you real quick while Travis does his traveling. Unless you want to, got something you want to do real quick? Nope. Okay. Nope, I'm ready. All right, so some time has passed. It's spring for you. It's the sixth of spring's end. Okay. It's morning, and you currently are standing in what's known as a blood room. You're inside. It, it, it's the blood room inside the Pierce Manor. Standing in the center is a magistrate. He's reading over an ever-growing list of slights that you personally committed against said offended individual. Mm. This individual is a pompous commoner who hangs on his father's purse strings and claims that he's offended. He also claims at being some sort of lord. He's a pompous lordling, a uh, wannabe, a pretender, and claims that you offended him when you failed to properly introduce yourself to him at a gathering. This offense further compounded when you spoke, in passing, to a lady that he fancied. <laughs> These slights continue to pile up and unknown to you completely for each day that you failed to apologize to him. <laughs> until yesterday when he approached you 
and demanded satisfaction. Uh -huh. You had a genuine worry for the man, the way his face contorted when you asked him who he was. <laughs> <laughs> he then told you to be here in this blood room at an appointed time. Hmm. Uh, if you want knowledge, religion, history, or Mars Oris, or a difficult no role, if you want to know more about the blood room. Okay, so knowledge. I'd say also maybe a difficult rural court if you want. Yeah, we'll do that one. What? How do you make it difficult? Let me see. Just change the multiplier. Uh, yeah, the uh, and I want to say difficult is one fifth. I believe okay. that's what a critical would be. So. All right, I'll try that. All right. Failure. If you want, I'm more than willing to allow a no. I let Travis roll twice on some so a difficult no might be better for you but you won't get a skill increase because it's a characteristic oh so it's up in the okay so let's try no and we'll make it difficult all right <laughs> it's okay <laughs> Same as the, you know, yeah so uh, so this is what you know like a blood room is a common feature in most manners in the city of Mar Ma Ugh, mars oris mm -hmm. it's uh usually painted red floors and, and walls with red stained glass and there are channels worked into the floor to draw blood away to various drainage the whatnot and in in most cases the ceiling instead of being painted red usually dons some sort of mural it's usually an event known as the quartering of Aryan win and unfortunately if you want you can try Again, a history or a no or a religion. Oh, really? I forgot to check if I had that. I think I meant to give it to you, but you don't. You technically do have religion. It's just not listed. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have any of those. All right. Do you want to just do a no or just? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll do a no. Is it difficult? No. Ah, success. Okay. I should have made it difficult for you. Mm -hmm. So, you know from your various teachings over the years that Aryan Wynn is a demon witch who was said to ensorcel men, causing them to fight over her to the death. Mm. Hence why this is usually a dueling room. Okay. She was said to be both fair of skin and hair with eyes like cold winter skies. And Solar found out about her demonic ways and had her ripped apart. Yeah, oh, okay. For her crimes. You do know also that over the years, while it's usually the the painting has taken on a fad of being as gruesome as possible, mm. but her face is also over the years being depicted as deriving more pleasure from it than uh, like horror or pain. So it's like the artists have slowly began to warp the the trend with it to some weird twisted <laughs> okay. uh, state of it. So this magistrate and this man are currently in an argument. Like you're just standing there, you're waiting to get this done. Okay. So there's a magistrate, and he's reading off these lists mm -hmm. of slights, and he's arguing with the man who I have apparently slighted. Yeah, okay. you you, you could roll royal court if you wish. You could also put some of your men on it if you wish to avoid the roll and have them do the uh, sleuthing for you like the day before after you received your challenge. And how would I do How does that work? Having them do it? Yeah. You would have just ordered it. There's just no skill increase if you... For well, I'll try a way. royal court here. Okay. Thank Failure you. again. All right. You know his name is Idris Pierce, and that's about all. He's a nobody. Yeah. The, actually, if it wasn't for the fact that you didn't want to insult more people by denying the duel, you probably would have just told him to get out of your sight. Right. But win in Rome, essentially. Yeah. All okay. right. So right now he's in this magistrate's face. The magistrate has declared the slights that he has read off does not warrant a duel to the death. And this man seems to crave it. <laughs> but the magistrate is like, no, these these lists of offenses, they are not worthy of a duel to the death. And I forgot to note. I was like, no, well, we're good. So as you're standing there listening to him argue back and forth, you can roll an insight against him or an insight. Yeah, an insight will have to be it. Sorry failed again <laughs> i'm this is starting out well I yeah like this. yeah this is uh i gonna be a fun character i, I, I was worried <laughs> that i would kill you in this duel yeah that's fine so yeah no worries uh so something's off you know that it's out of fashion 
to duel in a blood room. Like, there's no fame in it. Yeah. Right? They all duel in the streets where everyone can look and see, but you can't quite put your finger on what is what is wrong with it. Okay. So, yeah, it looks like he's preparing to really, like, hunker down and argue with this magistrate for a while. Yeah. And so I had accepted to come here just, you know, because I didn't want to insult more important people by failing to do it, right? Yeah, you would have been seen as a coward. Yeah. And so you got to you kind of have to save face once an actual duel is is instigated. Right. Yeah, so th- what what sense do I get looking at this guy just right off like first impressions would I would I think that I'm likely to be challenged by him or do I think I could probably take him, you know what I'm saying? Like when I just look at him, I'm like, well, roll, roll your, um, oh man, do I want to accidentally have you potentially waste an attack roll? <sighs> we'll risk it. Roll your attack, uh, your, your skill, not the actual attack. So, uh, under melee. Okay. Like my saber. Yeah. No, that's the full attack. Let me find the combat, right? Yeah. It's on the lower right hand side. Success. So you've been watching him his movements the way like he he knows his his sword but i don't think you would think he's anywhere near you now your character it's up to you on how overconfident or confident you might be in yourself but you were trained by valexian sword masters Mm -hmm. in the art of the saber you now you do know that a rapier very few people live to become masters yeah. because it is so deadly whereas there are a bunch of masterful sabers saber wielders mm-hmm. because it's usually less fatal overall right but yeah, you think if you had to go up against this guy you could probably make it to the death very quickly if you wanted to give him his wish <laughs> and they're still arguing about it mm-hmm. well so and i had never seen this guy nope you never knew he existed until he came up to you yesterday yeah but reading the, listening to the list of the charges, do, does that make, like, does it sound like, like I really was in the place where he said oh, I yeah. did? Okay. Yeah. You, you quite frequently go to various soirees mm-hmm. and they play at noble balls, essentially, right. right? And you entertain this and you meet merchants of high standing who wish to entertain you. Yeah so that they can get better deals and begin to profit and hopefully maybe earn titles. Right. Right. And get in good with you so they can get in better with your father. Yeah. And you understand this. You understand you have springs on your ass, to quote my father. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so, yeah, you were at a soiree. You, you, in fact, probably from the time you insulted him to like later that day, you probably went to another one. Right. Right. Yeah. So it seems to me like it's just strange that, that he's uh, so intent on fighting me, and I'm not really sure why, but I also can't like turn it down mm. and you know disgrace my yeah. my family. So what I'll do then is is I'll interrupt him and tell him that I will accept his challenge, even and I want to play up the fact that it's that these things don't warrant a duel. Mm-hmm. So I'll say you know despite the fact that none of this warrants a duel, let alone a duel to death. If you're so insistent on it, I will take up your challenge, but not in here. Hmm. Will. Roll an insight. Uh, where is it? Insight. Oh, yeah, it's a skill. Okay. <laughs> I just can't, can't win with this. You I'm see, like just staring. You see something <laughs> flicker across his face. Okay. You're pretty sure he was hoping that you would just go with to the to the first blood. Right. You accepting a duel to the death doesn't seem to be something he likes. Oh, dear. He was he was being <laughs> argumentative, but it was a front. Right. So, like, that's the obvious part of it. Yeah. But as to why here, why in a blood room, uh, you know, like, you, you're not quite sure why that all is. There's some other underlying stuff. Yeah. So you say that, and a manservant who came with you just holds up your the, the hilt of the sword to you. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, I said, you said not here. Sorry. Yeah. Well, let's go out in public and we'll do he wh- argues wherever that. people usually do their duels. He argues against that. He, no, no, it has to be in here. This is where it is honorable and legal is what his argument is. We already have a magistrate here. The magistrate can't oversee a duel in the public. Is that true? 
do you have a law or uh no i mean i haven't been here very long uh, just so. give a no see if i can keep you getting all these 50s out of the way it is true that's what these rooms are designed for this is where legal duels mm-hmm. occur yeah it's, but it's out of style yeah so like where does it usually happen on the streets usually at the moment the insult okay. occurs right. which is so what's so weird about this right he's going through all these proper means and then he's making an improper request yeah. that it has to be to the duel. He doesn't seem to care about that, or to the death. He doesn't seem to care that that's out of pocket, but right. you wanting yeah. to fight him in the street is. Yeah. And if you want, I'll give you one last insight roll to see if you can finally piece it together. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> Wait. I'll give you a bonus. You had a 20% bonus. Okay. Because <laughs> uh... it was like, it, it, like, all these pieces have begun to slam into place. Yeah. He is a coward. Right. He picks, he's most likely picking on you because he thinks you aren't good. Yeah. He, you're, you're, a, you're a weird little noble from a family no one likes because your father's a, a violent bastard. Yeah. And your brother's a drunken uh, psychopath. Yeah. And you are, you, you're quiet, you're weird. Yeah, nobody knows anything about, I don't have any. Yeah. He, so most likely he had a beef with one of your friends. Mm-hmm. And he is now picking stuff with you because he thinks he can take you. Right. Okay. The duel to the death that he's arguing for, he wants you to say, no, this is to be to first blood. Right. And then he probably plans to run you through regardless. Yeah. All right. So he wants you to basically play weaker with him, Mm -hmm. but he's going to go, you know, full force. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, I I mean, I know what this is like. I mean, this might... Put a check next to your insight as well. This is the, you know, the sort of thing that like my brother would do where he knows he can get away with more than me. So he'd push things. And so I'll just call his bluff and say, if you want a duel, even though the magistrate has said these don't warrant, then it'll be to the death and and I'll put it on him. Right. Mm. Say, do you accept or not? Mm. You know, that that way the word can go out that he refused the duel, not me. That's a know? good turn of uh, turn of play. He goes red in the face, mm-hmm. like a vein begins to bulge on his forehead. <laughs> and, uh, you know, very well, if you want to fight in the streets like some common riffraff, mm. so, uh, so be it. Where else would I find you? <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> he turns to the magistrate. <laughs> Do you hear him? <laughs> Another for the list magistrate. And the magistrate duly noted. Yeah. And marks it down. Anyway, gentlemen. It's a weird thing. Uh, or actually, Lord and Sir. Any motions to the door? Shall we take this into the streets? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> that said, the streets would be outside his, his manor's his, wall. Yeah. So you guys walk through the house, out of the blood room, down in or into a lavishly furnished hallway. Well, not furnished, but carpeted and paintings and all that stuff down into the main entry Mm -hmm. outside where your men are waiting. Oh, what did I name him? Idris? No, um, I believe it's, I believe it's Chelos, your captain of your, your honor guard. Oh, okay. Is leaning up against, uh, one of the pillars and he sees you walk out and he's like, are you over my lord? He says with a bow. And, uh, I'll just return whatever the customary greeting, but what was his name? Chelos, I believe. Chelos. It looks like it's C-E-L-S-U-S, but it's pronounced Chelos. Okay. Yeah, so I'll just, you know, give him the customary greeting and then tell him that, the, you know, basically, I'm going to fight a duel. <laughs> Couldn't we have just saved some time? <laughs> fought it. <laughs> well, I, you know, I was hoping that he'd be scared to do it out where other people could see, but <laughs> he's insistent on it, so. Yeah, he... Mm. Well, he looks over your shoulder at the approaching noble and magistrate. Shouldn't be a problem for you, my lord. Yeah. This arrived mm. while you were inside, and he hands you a small cylinder. Okay. Yeah, so I'll crack that open then. It says something akin to, My dearest son, I hope that you are well, and that this finds you hale and hearty, and I hope to see you soon, your loving father. Roll a no or... A etiquette mark. Royal court? That, uh, no, that... Um, or etiquette, you said. I have the House of Elox. Yeah. Or, is that the one? You can roll that, but a no or an idea as well. It'd be a hard idea or a, a normal no. Got the etiquette. Right, put a check. Success there. It's a coded message. <laughs> Your father 
even before his accident in the war, was a stern, not not a rough or cruel man, but stern. He would never write to you like this. Right. So with that role, you know that this this is basically saying, your brother has run afoul of Duke Slow. Fetch him for me. You know that Duke Slow, L O W E, is a lord in the Midlands, uh, uh, north of Dominus Solis, whose castrum protects the only crossable section of river in that area. And it se- essentially separates the southern half from the northern. Okay. You also know that you can do a royal court if you wish on this, and I can give you probably a more in depth on it. An etiquette or a knowledge royal Either. court? Um, knowledge. No fill there. Well, I didn't pay attention in my. You know the classes. basics of it, though, which mm-hmm. is uh, a couple months ago, uh, the steward of the land, Edric, coronated himself and crowned himself king. Mm-hmm. And immediately backlash occurred for this because there is no human king, as I already went over before. Right. You know that Duke's low sounds like I'm saying low or slow. Duke's low is a very pious man, and he immediately retreated to his castrum and rallied his banners. Yeah. And several other nobles went with him. And apparently, based on this letter, your brother was one of them. Okay. So he's he retreated you know, and started gathering his men at arms to resist this Edric. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And currently known as he took the name Alexander the second Rex Alexander. So he's King Alexander, uh, based off of the, apparently the first Stuart that Solar gave rule to. Okay. All right. And so apparently my brother has fallen in with him. He like agrees with him. Yeah. Well, your father is also pious enough. Yeah. So it would make sense for him to send his heir and son that direction. Okay. But then he got there and he did something he shouldn't. And now that... Yep, very likely. Duke's low is uh, upset with him. Yeah, yeah, like the best way you could describe it is your brother is like a, a pot put on the fire to boil, right? Yeah. He's fine for a while. And then he reaches a boiling point and he just... It becomes uncontrollable. He becomes a mad mm-hmm. lunatic. He believes himself to be pos- being possessed. This is stuff that your father has to keep the thumb pressed down on because such such rumors were to get out, which they did anyway, but they, they that would be something you might duel over. Yeah. Right? But if such rumors were to get out, it would stain the family reputation. Yeah. Okay. So, Chellis looks at you. So, what are we to do, my lord? He doesn't know about the contents of the letter. He's asking about the duel. Yeah, I'll just hand it to him and and say, get everybody ready to travel. We're going to have to leave as soon as I finish this. Yes, my lord. And he turns around and starts shouting orders, you know, sending uh, a couple men away to go ready the rest of your honor guard and to make ready to travel. Okay. Idris is looking at you like, what's wrong, cold feet? You're taking up so much time. My day is precious. Let's get to it. (laughs) I'll, uh, you know take my saber from my man who was holding it up for me and I'll go through like I guess it'll be sort of like an intimidation thing but I'll just go through like whatever the warm up exercise or the forms they would have used or mm-hmm. whatever just to get limbered up yeah but I'll go through that and uh, you know make sure I'm putting on a, a good show of it so he can see that I know what I'm doing with this thing if you wish to risk it you can roll your saber skill yeah <laughs> so I'll throw it 24 but... feet <laughs> He will be drawing his rapier from his nearby manservant. Yeah. And he will stop when it's mid, when it's halfway out of the sheath. Okay. And you'll, he is not happy. He did not think that you were actually good. Okay. Yeah. Um, But he will nonetheless draw the sword the rest of the way. Okay. So did you mean the saber skill i would mm-hmm. roll it okay but not this other one that's down in like the hand to hand weapons cuz the number's higher there yeah okay yeah so, so yeah you you're going through the forms slowly you don't want to strain anything you just want to warm up yeah and so yeah you're going through all the various guards blocks parries and just maybe some good basic footwork and he is not looking he's not looking angry he has now gone from red to a, a shade of white 
as he's very worried. Uh, sir, Idris, you look you look unwell. Are you sure you're up up for this? Should be you who is asking yourself such. <laughs> and he are you sure you want this to be to the death? I'm Oh yeah, I mean if if all the things that you said I've done are true, it can only be to the death. He looks to the magistrate. He's like, unless you've confused me with somebody else, I don't see how we could do anything other than to the death. Mm. Let's see. If we'll give him an insight. <laughs> he looks at you. Yeah. Uh, he, he's, he's scared. You know, he's kind of, he looks, he was looking at the magistrate while you were kind of talking and, and he's, starts kind of pleading with the magistrate like you yourself said that it's not legal to fight outside the blood room <laughs> you know you, you should call this off and then he kind of stops and he looks at you yeah. <laughs> no i think we will i think we'll duel wherever whatever slav and midden heap you wish to duel in mm -hmm. whatever you northern lords think you can get up to so yeah he readies himself okay all right, so how do we do this? So, how does it work here? It goes by strike rank. So, let's add you. And I don't think I have a token for him, so I think I can just add one somehow. We'll make him an item. Idris. <laughs> there we go. So, what is your dex? Uh, strike rank up at the very top in your characteristics. Actually, the dex is 14. All right, so. And then strike rank, what was that? That's the weapon size. So if he had a dagger, I would give you the, the bonus in that case. Okay. It, it's essentially, it's like if your dexes are tied, then you go to size. Gotcha. Okay. 14. He has a... I think I can actually just drag out his character sheet and he'll have a... There we go. So he makes himself ready. You will be going first. Okay. So how do duels work in this world? Like, is It's just going to be a standard fight. But do I know that, like... Oh, that, like actual, like, like, law? Yeah, like, is it is it possible w to retain honor by if he loses but doesn't die? Like, you can show him it. mercy, yeah. and it would... Like, he would technically be unable to pursue further duels against you for the same crimes he listed. Okay. But it would be a dishonor to him. Right, okay. Right. So it's one of those things where... He might get more angry at you, but it's technically something that you could do. It's something that some noble or merchants do to kind of like rub their face in it. Like, you know, yeah. I let you live. The only reason you're still here is because of me. All right. Well, we'll just play for keeps then. <laughs> so, yeah. So then it's just, um, would I be using this hand to hand one now? You'd be, yeah. yeah you'd be down. With the 80 or whatever yep. it is? Okay. All right, so then, yeah, I'll step forward, and um, and he's got a rapier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, I'll s step forward using it the way you would against a rapier, which I don't know, because I never did it in well, real life. Like, because it's a fantasy world, you can just yeah, name it however you I'll want. Just be, uh, yeah. I'll twirl it, like, so fast it could block bullets. And... <laughs> All right, go for it. But I know that they did a lot of, like with the saber, there was a lot of like really snapping slashes, right? Yeah. And uh, so, you know, that's what I'll do and I'll... All right. I got a special. What is that? All right, so he'll try to parry you. So the special means that your sword is going to do bleed damage now. Okay. And you hit. He's going to block four of it. So he's rapidly losing blood. He's going to lose one point and one hit point on dex rank one of each round after which the wound is inflicted. If in if fatigue points were being used, he'd also be losing those. While in combat, they may try to staunch the bleeding once per round, essentially putting an empty hand over the wound and applying pressure. At the end of each round, they can try a stamina roll to determine if the bleeding stops. If successful, the wound is held closed. The target will not suffer bleeding damage while doing so. Any attacks, parries, or physical actions they attempt will be difficult. Attempting to dodge cancels this attempt. So let's put a bleed. Come on. One. Oh, uh, that was something I forgot to do. Technically, how I want to do combat is actions highest to lowest, but de declar declarations lowest to highest. So you kind of would know what they would be doing. Oh, okay. So he was just going to go right for a lunge to your heart. Okay. You know, he was going to try to put you down immediately. All right. Roll hit location. That is located at the bottom. You'll see, uh, like, dodge, that black bar where dodge is. 
Yeah. On the right hand side, there's a sword or a bow. Okay. Roll the sword. The sword. Right arm. Oh, abdomen. Okay. I sliced him in the belly. All right. So, abdomen four. You got nine. Okay. So, your attack is just, you throw it out there. It's a, it's a particular type of maneuver where it just looks like a casual testing throw of your sword, right? Yeah. He's used to fighting rapiers, mm. and that's only really a danger on the thrust. They, some of them can cut, but it won't be like a saber. Yeah. He essentially parries the sword into his gut mm. through some fluke. Right. He blocked a good chunk of it, but just... And he lets out a, a, a horrible wail <laughs> as uh, he claps his hand over his stomach and begins to call for, for aid from his, his people. Mm -hmm. But the amount of blood you're seeing, it's not looking good for him. They might be able to stop it, but gut wounds are never fun. Right. Okay. And the magistrate turns to you and goes, well, that is that. Congratulations, my lord. Thank you. I'll, uh, you know, bow to him or whatever you do. Salute. Yeah, like uh, your customs could are considered formal enough, you know, okay. like, uh, so you don't have to worry about accidentally insulting him by making uh, a bow. But yeah, like, you know, yeah. sword up, yes. one foot out, right. give a bow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and then I'll leave. <laughs> I mean, it's over, right? I don't need to say anything more to him. Yeah, Chellis, uh walking beside you, you know, kind of leans close to you and you, uh, you know, excellent cut, my lord. Well, I mean, you saw who I was fighting. I don't think he ever even... Probably for the best you put him out of his misery then. Learned how to use that thing, so... Well, you know, they might be able to save him. Roll a luck. Luck. I don't even know where the hell luck is. It's up in the top on your characteristics next to POW, I believe. Oh, okay. Hmm. Got a success there. All right. I have a note that says, if... Landon kills Idris. Roll luck. Uh, success. That is that. <laughs> okay. So, for now, that is that for you. It will take a month or so for you to get to Damas Solis, and then about a week or, or about two weeks after that to reach Castle or Castrum Low. Okay. So you have a long journey ahead of yourself. And for that, we will leave it in the air for a little bit, and we will go back... Five days. I don't know. We'll go back a little bit further than that. We'll go back to uh, mid-spring sometime towards in the uh, later days of mid-spring. You have been, Travis, you have been in Damas Solis for some time. The person you were supposed to meet is a member of the... Where did I put it? Um, is a member of a... I can't find it immediately, so we might just have to go with the more translated name of a counting house. He, they do money lending. He's a, a man, a fat man, named Giorgio. Was it the Computatis Domum? Yes. Or Domum? Uh, yeah, the counting house. And he was who you were supposed to meet here. Okay. And so he doesn't really talk about anything that you're supposed to do. It's, uh, he's very roundabout. What he does is you play games with him, and he just talks about various rumors that he's heard throughout the city. And at some point, the city has become locked down after your arrival, right? That's when the coronation occurred, and Alexander ordered, well, first, uh, an execution of a bunch of nobles that made up the council that governed for him because he was too young at the time to be enacting his duties as steward. He killed them. He had them mostly executed, which made a lot of people angry. Then the the pontiff attempted to excommunicate him, so and, and and fled to his manor. The pontiff did. So currently, the pontiff's manor in the foothills outside of Damas Solis is besieged, and the rest of the city is fairly locked down. So you have had nothing but time on your hands, and a lot of that, at Giorgio's request, has been spending time gaming with him. Which is not, not going to teach him the Castellan, for sure. <laughs> which is not a bad thing, because a member of the counting house is the it's it's considered the secret power in Dama right. Solis, right? They have laws because they're not from these lands; they're from the east, the Near East. So they have laws where you owe them; they they will kill you, 
they will take titles and lands as they see fit. Now, they might give them back to curry favor, but because the, the church doesn't like that. The, right. the church and them kind of are at odds. So, do you spend your time gaming with him, or do you spend most of it? Just... Yeah, no, I'll do that. Although, I was curious if I interacted with my special cargo at all. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. You're here to retrieve it. Oh, okay. And so, it's around this time that he begins dropping hints. Now that we have this new king, it's, it's surprising how many people are fleeing from him type of hints, right? And on this day... He simply says to you that it would, I have heard a most wondrous rumor that if one was to wait near the old tree outside of the Castrum Solis, that a wonder might befall them. What do you think of this? And he makes a, a quick move with his hand on the, on the board. Right. Yeah. Well, I'll focus on my next move. All right. Give me some game and rolls and an insight if you have it or a, um, a bargain. Okay, here's gaming, success, and All bargain. Right. He's baiting you uh, on the board. Ah, failed the bargain, though. Uh, it could be a bunch of different things if you wanted. It doesn't have to be bargain, but this is more like etiquette would probably have worked better if you have etiquette. Well, as of 91, I don't think any of my yeah. skills would have met that. Okay. So I just was <laughs> too focused. <laughs> it's like... So you know he's getting at something, Yeah, obviously. He's not being like about the bush or beating about the bush with it right this you're and you're getting close to your deadline yeah right? you were to remain here till new spring on the second so well rumors <laughs> are rumors and who knows what they mean but i suppose a man with idle time on his hands could find himself waiting at such a place to see what wonders there are i i think about it from time to time what would i say if I was to just walk up to someone, you know, and a, a wind, uh, a windfall would, you know, occur. What do you think you'd say? I don't know that I'd say anything, but I would look over my shoulder. <laughs> Windfalls make me nervous in my line of work, sir. He gives you a, a chuckle and uh, kind of toys with the uh, patch of hair beneath his lip. And he says, I would say, I think I know this one, but I just don't. Oh, yeah, duh. I would say carpe diem. Seize the day, yes. Well, yes, that rule, I think, lies above even being wary. So I'm in agreement with you. Yes, I, and I think I would be inclined to carry a person that approached me and said such to wherever they wish. Yes, yes, I think so. I'll make my next move if he has made his. Is this guy I'm supposed to give my letter to? The mutual friend? Is... I, I forgot uh, that. You, technically, you would have given it Already to him. Already given it to yeah. him, okay. Oh, not that person. Let's go with this one. All right, so you make your move, and then we'll change this real quick to forget how to spell it. So uh, that doesn't look right, but I'll go with it. Just pretend it says Giorgio. Did you give your skill roll? Or your gaming? Oh, another one? Sure. This move I call the Oops. Great Harvest. But he specialed me again. Dang it. He succeeded. Should have stuck with the Castellan. Oh, we both got a success. Yeah. So he, uh, you've actually found yourself getting better in his presence. Okay. So you, you know, make your check if you haven't already. And in a moment of kind of uh, honesty, he kind of leans back and puts his hands across the girth of his stomach. And he's like, ah, I will miss these games. You have been quite... Uh, Quite a pleasure to have around, a pleasure and a joy, Hadrius. Yes, uh, well, the pleasure's been mine, and I think if any, there's going to be any seizing of days, I will go see what's what out in the city. Hmm. I will not forget you, he says, and he stands up and leaves the room. Okay. Now, there are some people out there who would consider that a very veiled threat, but because you really didn't do anything to wrong him, to the best of your knowledge, anyway. Yeah. You can consider that perhaps intimidating, because it means not just that he won't forget you, but the counting house won't forget you, is what you can kind of glean right. from that. Yes, well, it's the moment where, you know, he's dreaming of greater riches, and in the back of his head he knows that means dealing with higher stakes. Mm -hmm. So it's like a, a pivot point. Is this something I really want? And he just says, well, yes, I do. Carpe diem, mm -hmm. it is. So, um, 
in case you didn't pick it up, that is what someone will say to you. Right, if I wait yeah. at the tree. All right. So it's getting on towards dusk. Is that where you're going to go? Yes. All right. Roll. Oh, what would it be a good one? Knowledge of Damas Solis would be one. Uh, or insight. Knowledge politics. Or I think that might be it. Yeah, I, they're all pretty low. You throw one out. So we'll go with insight, I guess. Hmm. Failure. All right. You do note that it's rather quiet tonight, but it has been fairly quiet for a while now. Uh, most of the people, since the fighting has started in the suppression of the various rogue factions in Alexander's court, he has, uh, that most of the streets are cleared most of the time. In fact, it's getting to the point where the fields are about to go unsown. And so, but you make your way to the tree and you begin to wait as the sun sets in the west. Then we will cut back some more time to Jardane. So this is about a month ago. You started receiving letters from an unknown person who signed all of the letters with a capital D and an L, but left no house markings or any other identifying marks on the page. And it, at first you thought that they weren't actually addressed to you. They seemed almost rambling, or not rambling, but meant for someone else. You know, like uh, someone writing musings about the recent coronation and how they chafed under such a, a blasphemous rule. You know, stuff like that. And then they began to come a little bit more pointed your direction, and it seemed like they were actually asking a question to you, and that was, if you could leave the service of the now king and quit being a royal alchemist, essentially a slave, would you? And if you would, a way to present yourself so that they would know you, simply donning a white flower in your lapel would tell them such. Now, you can... Oh, sorry, go for it. So I don't have any way to really communicate back other than than this, correct? It's like that is nobody correct. actually delivers these. Uh, I'm just, I find them. Mm -hmm. Under okay. your door, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I guess, can, is there any background on, like, how bad has everything gotten? How Real bad. How um, I treated? Where is this? This is the... Sick or the second new spring or no, it's coming up. So this is this is right after the events. We've kind of gone back in time a little bit. So this is right after the events of Alexander's coronation, and so like right now, the castrum castrum solus is locked down. Not too long ago, you heard gunshots elsewhere in the castle. His uh, his royal guard putting down rogue elements in his court. You've been probably living in some state of fear for a while. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I will. I I won't give it a ton of thought. Uh, then uh, if things are that bad, so uh, it's it's getting pretty obvious that the the king is not, uh, or the now king is not able to properly secure his rule, mm -hmm. and even as valuable as I. I may think I am. I also know that my life is not worth too much, so as I will uh, wear this uh, f flower in the lapel. All right. So um, after you do that, you think that perhaps they had not seen you, or perhaps it was some joke. If you are of the more paranoid sort, which any of the royal court denizens, uh, any people that make Castrum Solus their, their main like hangout spot, would probably have a little bit of it in them. It might have been a trap, is what you begin to think, right? Somewhere to Some way for Alexander to out those who would seek to leave his services until, under your door, another letter is slipped. And that one says, uh, We are most pleased that you have accepted our proposal. And a crude map is kind of drawn on it. You recognize this, well, give me a no, actually, sorry. Or a navigate. Where, uh... Knows a characteristic up at the top of the character sheet next to education. You wanted that or navigate? Mm-hmm. Mm. All right. You recognize the spot. It's somewhere in the dungeons, 
are near the dungeons, but you're not quite sure where in the in the belly of Castrum Solis. Uh, you work near there. That's where the labs are, where uh, Alexander has uh, gunpowder and his weapons made. Okay. And it is are we constantly uh, me and my my fellow alchemist slaves? Are we like constantly watched, or is it no. more you know? I guess traditional kind of thinking of like they they let you go about your business as long as you haven't really caused any trouble, but you, yeah, you definitely know that you're owned. Yeah, um, it that's you're basically allowed free roam of Castrum Solis, Solis, uh, and you can probably venture out into Dominus or the city Dominus Solis, but it's frowned upon because your secrets are something that is passed down. You aren't allowed to marry. You are not allowed to have children. You are not allowed to really speak to anyone outside of the castrum because these are so highly guarded. Uh, that is, it's a kind of work into your lore. That's why you don't have a, a last name. You have no lineage. You're not allowed to because of fear that you would eventually try to make some sort of name for yourselves. Not you particularly, but the royal alchemists in general, right? That they would try to begin to broker some sort of uh, power play is what was feared is how out of place is it for for others that i have seen to wander around down there in the dungeon area or yeah. near the dungeons near the dungeons not, not weird at all i mean for the most part yeah. you would just say that you were going to your lab yeah then i'll i'll start to try and make small excursions uh you know, to find this place is I'll, I'll try to identify if I can on that map any area that I recognize first that would take me over to the lab and then okay. try and start from there of yeah. finding out where where exactly this is. All right. Roll me a no or a navigate with a, a plus 20 to it because you have the map. How do I? So it has a multiplier. Or am I just putting it in the modifier portion? Are you going with no? Um, um, yeah, I think that would would be yeah, more um, proficient. I believe is easy an option? Make it easy. Yes. Yeah, go for it. Mm. <laughs> and I use two luck. Well, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, I forgot about that. R P. I do think I like pushing, but all it will okay. do is take you longer. Bad rolls permanent. Yeah, I'll, if you uh, want to keep the then. fail. All right, push it. Always All right, push. good job. You find it. It appears to be a dead end, very close to the dungeons. On the map, you see the wall that you're currently standing in front of, and it has a little mark on it and says, pull this stone free. Okay, how, many, how much time do I have before I'm supposed to go... Or be in this place? Like, was there any type of time limit given? Oh, sorry. I've been going on with Travis about... Yeah, it, it was given to you the day before. And it says, you know, on the second spring's end... I hope that's what I've been saying. Yes. Okay. On the second of spring's end, transverse this passage. And the first man you meet, say carpe diem. You know, that you seize the day. Okay. So, how from the time that I... I uh, get this message. How how many days is that to uh, second springs in? It's the next day. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So yeah, as I mean, oh. and all. Uh, and it yeah, also I mean, tells no, you no time like the present. I mean, I'm probably not going to get much uh, a much better chance as long as it looks fairly clear. Um, mm -hmm. Nobody around. And it also says that uh, if when he asks where you wish to go, tell him Castrum Low. So uh, Castor Low, like with a C or Castrum. Or Castrum, okay. Castrum is castle. Okay. So, so you're so, yeah. asking to go to Castle Low. I'll uh, I'll look around and make sure the coast is clear. All right, and then come back the next day. Yeah, as come right. back, come back the next day, and I if it's roughly the I'll try to do it roughly the same time frame ish, right? That way, mm -hmm. it's if it's if it is fairly clear right now. All right. So you don't need to uh, roll a another navigate or a no, but you do need to roll a luck this time around, which is your pal. Success. All right. No un unexpected guards are in your path. You you have a pretty good idea of the routine. Most of them about this time are settling in 
for their various respective watches, which is just the dungeon in this instance, right? They'll sit down there. And the dungeons are currently full. Uh, you can hear coming up through the stone as you're walking various prisoners, most of them decrying Alexander. And you know that many of these people will soon be decorating the walls. And then you find yourself in front of said wall again. Okay. So yeah, I'll look around one more time and nervously uh, pull that stone. All right. It's, uh, it just opens up into a, a hole that you can put your arm through, right? It doesn't, like, open a door or anything, right? It's just uh, you remove the stone, and it's just kind of there's nothing behind the wall is what I'm saying, right? It, so I'll uh, give a small sob of despair. It was all a <laughs> trick. After all, I'm doomed. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'll, uh, I mean, I've already gone this far, so I'll, I'll, uh, push my, my hand and arm into that hole and feel around. Mm -hmm. After a brief bit of feeling around, your hand comes upon a metal lever, like a door latch. Okay. I'll, uh, grasp it and, uh, try to give it a pull. All right. Give me an effort, which is next to your strength. Ah, success. So... You wretch up on this lever, and it gives a little squeak, but it must be maintained, or maybe it's just been closed to the elements of time. And the door that you now realize is a door, or the stone wall that you now realize is a door, swings inward, and it's dark on the other side, pitch black. I don't imagine there's any lighting, torches, or anything, lantern in this area, are there? No, like, guards will usually bring their own, so you, knowing this, okay. probably brought your own, a lantern, most likely. Okay, well, I'll go on to, or into the, uh, into that passage, and, uh, light it. Okay. As uh, you notice that... to close the door with. It's meant to be closed from the inside. It's essentially stones, kind of, uh, attached to a wood frame, right? And so the stone on your side just slides back into place and it's so you do that it's lit yeah. it's a long hallway essentially it goes slightly down and then begins to even out you know all right, all right. so i mean at at this point I imagine probably pretty nervous so yeah. it's heart racing you are, i'll yeah <laughs> i'll uh i'll try to quickly make my way down here uh this uh kind of limping uh gate though is the uh, damage that had been done to my uh my left leg earlier mm. in life makes uh speed uh pretty, pretty a challenge difficult for me okay so yeah you're you're limping at a fairly decent clip for yourself and uh through the left side of the wall at one point you can hear people talking fairly like muffled but fairly loudly you're able to actually make out one man crying uh, out to Solar for uh, for death, essentially. Torturers, I imagine. Mm. As all You've I, heard I, of that. I will yeah. slow through this part. I don't imagine that it's it's very quiet, but if I can hear them, I, I'm not sure if they are able to hear me or if they do what they would make of it. So I'll slow <laughs> a, a bit so that I can Give try to stealth. quietly go past... I'm not going to push that one, but it has about as close to a success as I'll probably get. Put a get. check mark, uh, and you've been putting your check marks on the other skills. Um, I think I've only rolled characteristics. Okay, sorry. Do you I've want just... me to put one next to power since it with the luck, or because that's mm -hmm. the only one that has a check? Mm -hmm. No, not not uh, not yet. I think if it was being challenged, we'd put the check mark, but not yet. All right, so yeah, put your check mark next to stealth, and you make your way through without being noticed by the people on the other side. And eventually, you come to another door in a similar fashion as the one you entered through. All right, so I'll, I'll try to try to listen first, see if I hear anything on the other side. Okay, uh, give a listen. Yes. And, uh, all right, uh, you hear not a whole lot due to the thickness of the wall, but you think you hear the sounds of, uh, like, wind blowing through. You kind of feel it. Okay. I I will put the uh, lantern down and try to to push the the wall. There's a lever. Oh, there's just a like lever the, here. Okay. Yeah, just like the I'll, previous I'll door. Pull the lever then. 
All right, give me an effort. Difficult this time. No, oh, just normal. No. <laughs> sorry. I'll never mm. get out. All right. Was, uh, oh, sorry. I changed it to difficult. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, redo that. There, there you go. Oh, ooh. All right. So, yeah, this one takes a little bit more effort, but you do get it open. And the wall swings outward into the very chilly night air. All right. Pick up the lantern and pull my cloak tight. And, hmm, I mean, it's it's not like I'm necessarily... Uh, timid so mm. i i'm gonna walk out like i'm supposed to be coming out of here okay down the way kind of off to your right uh you quickly realize that you're outside the castle wall that this passage was built into like an under, it went underground and then kind of came up into the outer wall of castrum solis and so the wall actually opened out of it into the foothills kind of around castrum solis and off to your your right, you see an old tree and something, some sort of shadow underneath it. Roll a listen. <laughs> no, the wind is too strong. I can yeah. probably hear and, my heart beating in my ears because oh, yeah. uh, how how nervous I am now that I'm outside the city. And it's very cold. It's uh, still spring, and spring likes to linger in these parts. All right. So what do you do? You know you're supposed to meet someone, but... Well, I, again, I've I've gone this far, right? Is I'm definitely not going to turn back. I, this is really the only option. Is I just hope that it's not hope it's not a trap. So I'll, <laughs> All right. I will make my way over there. Again, maybe false bravado this time, though. Act like I'm supposed to be in this uh, area, going to this tree. So, Hadrius, second spring's night or spring's end, nighttime, deep night. It's dark. It's cold. And the only lights in the city belong to the bonfires of the soldiers in the distant foothills that have surrounded the pontiff's manor. On high, in the sky overhead, a gossip moon watches over you. Uh, you can roll knowledge, religion, folklore, occult, or a difficult idea, or no roll. Oh, it's like no, a standard no or a difficult idea. Okay, we'll try a standard no. Mm -hmm. Nice. A gossip moon is said to be when Luna the goddess who birthed Solar, takes a particular interest in events that are unfolding on the surface of Terra, and she leans in closer to get a better view. Luna has been full each night in the, for the past month, and that's unnerving. Mm. It's, it's, some, it's like the gods are watching you, right. or watching the events in Dominus Solis. And so it, I don't know, it's like she's not a bad goddess, but she does have her deceitfulness, you know, her tricks that she likes to play. Yeah. Most of them are forgotten in the modern era, but some still hold in the the folk uh, teachings and, and whatnot. Roll a... Listen for me. Mm. The wind picks up, <laughs> and that moon, that damned moon, Luna, she stares at you, <laughs> and she, you feel her eyes on you, and it's just distracting. You're just sitting there, you are cold, and you are being watched by a, by a deceitful goddess. <laughs> <laughs> and so you don't notice the footsteps that are coming up uh, to your left. As, as I, uh, I get closer then, as if they... It's not you, it's a demon. Oh. I'm joking. All right, so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, demon. Travis, give <laughs> your character description to... Uh... Yeah, so t uh, I'm tall, but I'm stooped. I'm kind of... Standing there looking up at the moon with a grimace on my face, my hands clasped behind my back. Also, I look slightly annoyed. <laughs> I'm not, my clothes aren't that well off, not yet, anyways. But so, yeah, that's where you find me. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I'll, uh, again, wagon near uh, at hand. Walk. <laughs> what? Would you, would you have brought your wagon or would you have left it, uh, wherever? Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I got, so, yeah, there would be that wagon with a team, a small team of four horses, and I guess a cheap, cheap raiding merchant guard standing about somewhere, too. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's the cards. Run. I'll make him for your next session. Okay. I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, approach again, like, uh, as, as confident as I can, but as I get close is my, uh, you know, falsehood will show, and I'll kind of a, a cracking voice uh yeah uh carpe diem mm. all right so your guard didn't notice either <laughs> right 
he was yeah, eating an apple for? or something. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you hear Carpe Diem. Yes, yeah, so I'll give a start and turn to look at this cracked voice that whispered it to me. All right. Your uh, your guardsman, he begins to draw his sword. Yeah, I'll hold up a, a hand. All right, John, give a description of yourself. What does Travis see? Uh, I don't know. What is the average age life in this this place and time? Oh. I'd say probably about 38, maybe 50 if you're really, really healthy. Okay. So, I mean, it, uh, middle, I guess, middle, young, middle age-ish, right? Not uh, kind of average height. Um, he's about 5'7", but he, he really thin, right? Pretty, I wouldn't say, you know, definitely not expensive clothing, but not, uh, you know, haggard, uh, you know, beggars or prisoners clothes, uh, more faded and old. But uh, as as well kept as they can be is uh, pretty about as clean clean cut as you can get at the time. But uh, definitely more to, on the the frail side rather than uh, you know muscular. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ah, the cargo. Yes. Well, I do not believe we'll be seizing the day under this moon. Mm -hmm. Let's get you settled, shall we? And I, to understand that. You know where you are going. Uh, Castrum. Castrum? Castrum, yeah. Castrum Low. It's a castle. It's uh -oh. a thing. Castrum Low. Sorry. Oh, okay. You know, Travis, that because you have probably passed through and done various merchant travels, or during your merchant travels, it's to the north. Yeah, I see it uh, on the map there. Is that eight days or so away? No. Longer? You have to go all around? Yep. It's... Where did I put it? It's... um. I can't tell the. It's called the the road would roughly translate into the northwest spiral is the main road. The on uh, ramp essentially for it would be that, and then from there it goes counterclockwise until it hits about there, and then you would be out. There's also another exit there, but it's made that way, and it's it has gates like. Uh, checkpoints right yeah. every so often and it to create you know choke points kind of like a minus tier hmm. thing, right just on a bigger scale yeah if you uh, now nah. well, so yeah you know that it will be quite a journey okay yeah and i'm like well cargo do you have a name <laughs> my name is jardane then i shall call you jardane you may call me hadrius if it pleases you if you want to come up with a name on the Swift. spot for your merchant guard, you can. <laughs> Bill. <laughs> Whoops. As a, if you name him that, he'll be the hero of us all. Steve. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, the, uh, just uh, what was, uh, who was the one that was always dying? Not the donkey or the mule that was a terror to everything. Didn't we have a guardsman that was always dying back in the day? Oh, man. Yeah, what was the guy's name in Wheel of Time? I think he was on like the Panama or Patashar, right? Mm, yeah. 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 We'll just call, we'll we'll call him uh, Patashar. Let's call him Olympio. Olympio? Okay. <laughs> that was just the lat probably the same Latin name generator. Uh, make a used. note of it in your possessions. Okay. And I'll stat him out for you call next him week. Call Ollie for short. Yeah, yeah. It's a good good nickname. Was, uh, well well met Hadrius and Olympio, if that's how you introduced him. If you introduced him as Ollie, I'm going to call him that too, though. Yeah, Ollie. I'll say, this is Ollie. He's working for me at the moment. He's conveniently mute. <laughs> and lacks as a will all of his good own. <laughs> NPC hirelings are. <laughs> yeah, so I'll show. They won't find a spot that's comfortable for you on the wagon here. Perhaps under this wool. I'm not sure. Are we? Do we need to keep him hidden? Is that the impression I was getting? Um, As we're journaling, journeying, journeying, at it's least it's not near this so area. much that they might recognize him because they're fairly secretive about who okay. the alchemists are. But yeah, like it might be a good idea to hide him at certain points. It and to do so now, you think? And John will know this. Hadrius will know, or not Hadrius? Uh, Jardine would know this. Uh, that gun he's got with him should definitely be kept hidden because it's illegal for it to be in possession of the common man, which he now has become, right? That, that, that's given to Alexander's royal guards. 
and his personal armies. Okay. Well, make yourself as comfortable as you can, and there's food and drink if you need it. All right. That would so, be most welcome. Is all, uh, yeah, the the firearm that I, I have is not definitely not showing. Is that's okay. uh, as concealed as I can make it under as many layers as possible, uh, as maybe even in in my belongings if I mm-hmm. took anything else rather than on my person. But yeah, I'll, I will uh, limp over to the to the wagon and with some difficulty climb up and right. uh, start burrowing under for get some warmth. <laughs> Yeah, oh, Ollie will uh, offer a hand for you, or help you, and if you require it. Yeah, well, thank Ollie you. will have to be riding near you, I'm sure. Oh, while I drive the wagon. Yeah, so I guess he could get <laughs> in first and pull you up in after. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll thank him for the assistance. Um, I will grab if if there is some, like uh you know whatever hard tech or bread or something <laughs> that I can eat while I'm just burrowed turnips. under all these uh, <laughs> wools. Turnips. Uh, that works. All right. And Hadrius? Once everybody's settled, I'll get the horses going. Get them going as fast as you can go <laughs> on the bounciest. I, I would. Yeah, I think so you I'll would. Start jamming the, what was it like? What'd you make to your horses go in Red Dead Redemption 2? Oh, Just jamming. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'll, t- I'll take a normal pace out there. Like I'm, nothing unusual is happening, nor is the moon odd. All right. I'm just a merchant of wool and beeswax at this moment. Now, uh, as you're taking off into the night, uh, after a click of your tongue and the snap of the reins, you're remembering Giorgio kind of musing about how the city has been locked down, how all of the, the various checkpoints have been closed and barred, and what type of man would be able to defy a king and have them opened? Well, what, what would you think? He he po- poises the question to you. Who who? What type of man could do such a thing? And you know, you gave your answer, and he just kind of laughed and brushed it aside. But now, as you're driving up towards the first checkpoint that will begin the north uh, western spiral, you see that the gate is open, and two guards standing there seem to be looking in opposite directions from you. And as you well, so. Uh, do you just go for it, or? Yeah, I mean, I guess so. Okay. So, yeah, the same speed, or do right. you pick it up, or? No, same speed. All right. Keep it greater beings than myself are All right. at play here. <laughs> Keeping it under uh, <laughs> three yeah. Yeah. miles an hour. <laughs> the uh, As you pass by, the guards seem to strike up conversation with themselves. Right. Saying how the weather seems to be clear for for a, a while now. Smooth sailing is what I hear, or replies the other one. Uh, you can roll an insight, but <laughs> they weren't talking before. Right. No. You can as well, John. But you're pretty sure that the message is clear. At least, at the very least, you hope it was meant for you. <laughs> Definitely no. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, you guys suck. Hey, they I'm weren't meant for this life. Uh, yeah. I'm not also, a, a, we're uh, a court spy. Here, man. We're just common folk. Well, I mean, that, that's funny because I failed like every <laughs> yeah. role I did. So <laughs> the second you're through the gate, they close it behind you. Right. All right. So that is where we will leave off for episode one. Thank you guys for playing. I uh, mm-hmm. hope you had some sort of fun. It yeah, was fun. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so next time, same bat time, same bat channel. All right. Yes. Yes. Oh. Uh. This has been a Death Watch production. Thank you for listening. Mm-hmm.